I'm not a huge fan of swimming downhill because quite often people press their chest and their head down too far. Welcome to Feedback Friday. In today's episode, we're looking at a triathlete who said he's good on the bike, he's good on the run, but he's been struggling with his swimming. He feels like he's plateaued. And he said he's gone through our virtual freestyle clinic and improved from there, but he feels like right now he's hit a plateau. So we're gonna go through the video and see what he can do to swim faster. Now, as we look through here, one of the angles I wanna to cut to to begin with is this side view under the water, and this is what we normally look at first. So in terms of body position, you can see that he's sitting pretty well in the water in terms of there's not much drag that's getting created from his legs dropping or anything like that. So that's a positive. If we have a look at head position, what you'll notice here is his head goes really deep. So right there, the whole head's under the water and he might be going for that phrase, swimming downhill. I heard it used quite a bit. I'm not a huge fan of swimming downhill because quite often people press their chest and their head down too far and it causes them to have their shoulders and have their head too far under, where you'll see most top swimmers will have the top of their head above the water. So generally, you know, for most people, I like them to sit in this sort of position. It gives them that nice and tall and proud posture as opposed to that rounded shoulders posture where they're pressing everything down too low because we don't want to feel like we're really swimming you know, downwards in that direction. We want to feel like we're kind of sitting near the surface of the water. So the first thing I'd have this swimmer adjust would be his how much pressure he's applying through here and through here. So I'd say, all right, lengthen your spine, have your chest out instead of maybe rounded. And I, I would say with your neck or your chin, press your, your chin back into the base of your neck or into the base of your spine. So it's gonna be like this. It's kind of like going for a double chin. Now that will help him have, keep this a little bit higher and that should sit him a little bit better in the water. So that would be the first thing. It's really just head position and, and posture there, just a slight change. What he'll find there is that when he goes to turn his head to breathe, it won't be quite as, he won't have to lift up as much. Cause you can see here that if we're having to go from all the way under the water here to getting the head out, he's lifting his head up a lot. And you can see how much he's looking forwards there. And then the head turns. So it takes quite a bit of movement to get the head to the, um, to the side to breathe. Whereas if he's just sitting a little bit better in the water there, it's just turn your head, come back and you've got the breath. It's really easy. Um, in terms of the kick, the heels are breaking the surface, which is good. And it looks as though he's, he might have reasonably tight ankles, which is, um, which is pretty common if you have a cycling background or running background. Look, that's pretty common. Um, so look, that can always be improved, but I don't often focus too much on that, particularly for triathletes, because that can take quite a while to improve. And you're often better off focusing on the catch in the pull and, um, and that connection through the rotation, through the hips and so on. So uh, I wouldn't focus too much on that for this, this swimmer. Now, what you will see here from this side view is that when he enters the water, you'll see that the right hand enters there. So it comes in a little bit steep, you know, like that hand angle's a bit too much. So it's creating a little bit of drag there. And then when he finishes reaching forwards, which is there, you'll notice that the hand is going down a little bit too deep. So where we typically wanna be is fingertips at underarm depth. So in that sort of position, when you finish reaching forwards, whereas he's going another 15 centimeters, 20 centimeters below that. Now that will slow him down with the oncoming water that's gonna hit on top of his arm. Plus he's missing out on this front part of the catch, that setup phase of the catch. And I think the same thing happens on the left arm. So let's see, he comes in, reaches forwards, a little bit too deep there. Not as bad, but just a little bit too deep. Now, the main thing that's, that he really misses out on there as a result of going down too deep is it looks as though he's not really getting very good connection from his, um, through his hips and through his upper body. So he's not really lengthening through there because if we want to use our body when we swim, as opposed to our arms independently and our legs independently of everything else, then we need to get this lengthening of the muscles through the, let's see, through the, uh, the hips there and then through the, the torso up to the shoulder. So when we enter, we reach forward, you've got to lengthen through there, but because he's coming in and just going a bit deep, we never really get that. And so he's probably going to be using a lot more effort just through his, through his arms um, than he would if he can get that 
lengthening through the hips and through the upper body. So if we have a look at a swimmer like, if we have a look at um, this video here of Dan Smith, you'll see how he gets this really good extension all the way through the length through the body and that helps him connect everything up. So what I'd suggest for this swimmer here is when you come in with your hand, feel like you are reaching forwards for the wall that's in front of you and you want to do that to the point where you're, you know, you're stretching out more and see if you can feel that extension, that lengthening through the upper body as well. Um, now it will feel very different and it might feel like you're quite shallow compared to where you're used to going, um, but that would be the first thing. So as he enters and extends forward, be, I'd be thinking, reach for the wall, reach for the wall, reach for the wall, and that will help him do those two things there. Because you can see that like his actual, his actual sort of catch position here is really good in terms of, all right, he's just in that high elbow range. And as you know, a high elbow position just means when we finish the catch, so we start the catch here, finish the catch around here. When we finish it, if we draw a straight line from the shoulder to the fingertips, if that elbow is above it, then it's a high elbow catch. So he's got nice surface area to work with. So he gets that, he gets that high elbow position through there. This one's not far off, it's still good surface area, not quite as good as the left, but it's still pretty reasonable. So um, he's getting that good position, but where he's missing out on, on it is that he's just going quite deep. So you'll find that when we look at the front view, which we get at the middle section here, is as he goes into the catch, and then he finishes there. If we have a look at his arm angle, which is right here, all right, his arm angle is not too bad. It's 127 degrees. We typically want that 100 to 120 degree angle. That's where we find most of the elite swimmers. And here, you can see this one's quite straight. So it's roughly 147 there. So that just means he's going down too deep. Where you'll find elite swimmers is that they'll be 100 to 120, which means in that sort of position there. So the way he can improve that is if he brings his fingertips from down where it is there, bring it up a bit shallower, that will naturally create a better angle. So let's say his fingertips are there instead. Okay, he would be you know, somewhere in that kind of position and you'll find he's gonna be so much stronger. He'll be right into his lats there. He'll be using that a, a lot better than when he's down deep with it. So the, the, the concept or the way that he might change how he's thinking about his, his freestyle is, okay, enter the water, I'm reaching forwards for that wall in front of me. And I'm getting some, some stretching, some lengthening through my body, my shoulders and my arm. And instead of when I enter, instead of trying to sort of go downwards, I'm just looking to go straight out in front because he'll set up the catch quite well um, anyway, but it's just that everything's sort of, you know, if you look from the side, everything's kind of operating in this sort of, this sort of angle, right? So he's coming in and everything's just sort of operating down down here too much. Where I would be looking to operate would be in this sort of position instead. So operate out here and then go through. So instead of just being, being down there. So it might just be, you know, sometimes it can be a phrase that you've heard or something that you're trying to, that you're thinking about while you're swimming, like the phrase swimming downhill that can cause these things to happen. Um, so it might just be, all right, we want to change that cue that he's, that he's using that's really where I'd spend most of my, my time is uh, adjusting that. And then if we want to get better connection through the body as well, there's, there's three drills that I've been giving quite a few of our members in our stroke analysis membership. So they've sent in their videos and the thing that we're up to now is that rhythm and connection. They've, they've worked on their body position. They've, they're improving their catch really well. Um, head position's great and now we just want to work on that connection through the body. So the three drills that I've been giving a lot of our swimmers recently is front kick rotation drill where you've got both arms by the side. I love that drill for, um, for really working on the connection through the stroke. The other drill that I've been giving them is fiddle faddle drill where you've got one paddle on, one fin on. That helps with this cross connection through the body. And the other drill I've been giving them, some of them are single arm freestyle drill um, or freestyle with dolphin kick and you really want to feel this drive through the hips with every dolphin kick that you do and you can see these videos here uh, on the screen. So it really just depends on, on where you're at with your swimming. So the um, best way to kind of get started there is if you can get some footage of yourself swimming, if you get a friend to record you on your phone and you've seen some of these videos, then you might be able to decipher what it is that you need to work on. 
If you're not sure where to start, have a look at the five core principles that I'll link to below. I've got them set out on our website there. And if you're looking for drills to improve each of those things um, and looking for videos explaining them, then check out our video membership, um, which at the moment is just $99 a year. So you can um, sign up, I'll put the link there if you choose to. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments um, if you've got any questions about this analysis or questions about anything that I mentioned here. And um, I'm going to do another one of these Feedback Fridays next week as well. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next week.